Attention sleepless nights. Thank you for consuming this OSI 74 product broadcast live from the Black Knight satellite. For optimum performance and safety, your host, Mr. Lobo, asks that you please listen to these instructions carefully. When in a hospital or other healthcare facility, observe the restrictions on the use of electronic devices. Switch off before boarding an aircraft to prevent interference with communication systems. Do not operate this device in the presence of flammable gases or fumes, chemical plants, or where blasting operations are in progress. Always listen hands-free while driving a vehicle. Failure to observe these instructions may lead to immediate termination. It's time now for the show to begin. Thank you. Have a very pleasant evening. You're not dreaming. We're driving. I better not be dreaming. Well, you know, you don't want to be sleeping behind oh, the no. wheel. No, no, I'm about ready to sleep behind this wheel. This guy in front of is driving like 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 a freaking horse and buggy. Uh, that is a horse and buggy. Oh, oh, oh yeah, I forgot where we're at. We are, that explains a lot. Yeah, we are in Amish country. Uh, this is the Sleepless Nights podcast. Uh, How do you suppose he gets gas in that horse? I wonder, wonder what the gas mileage is for a pony. You don't want to see him fill up that horse. <laughs> Uh, there is uh, some interesting developments here. We are on our way to the Philadelphia International Airport to pick up Aaron Lane, who, da, 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 da. who is well known as a producer, director, and archivist for the program Cinema Insomnia, of which I am the host. Miss Mittens is the co-host. Paul is also a director producer. Uh, Paul sweeps the floor at night. Dixie, uh, Dixie Della Mordo. Say who hi. Is Oh my gosh, she speaks. Uh, Dixie Della Mordo Lobo is also in the car, uh, who is also a producer and art director for uh, Cinema Insomnia. So we have got the A-team here. If something were to t- something yeah. were to happen to this car after we pick up Aaron, there would be no more Cinema Insomnia. Wait, we're the A-team? It might be a Baracus. Uh, you're, you're, uh, I don't I'd know. I'd rather be Murdoch. I, I think I fit Murdoch. You're a Murdoch. Murdoch. You're yeah. certainly not face. I know I'm not face. I'm more yeah, Murdoch. I guess you're you're the wild card. Yes. I guess. Yeah. Well, that, what would that make you, Hannibal? I suppose I would be Hannibal because Dixie's and Mr. Dixie's D. Mr. D. Dixie's B. A. That makes sense. Dixie's B. A. Mrs. D. Mrs. D. Mrs. D. Solving mysteries in a van. Dun dun dun. So we did both the Mr. T cartoon and the A-Team theme. A lot of letters. A is a letter. T is a letter. The 80s B-A-M. was the, a, the, the B-A. The you know, initials were big in the uh, in the 80s. People liked letters. Well, they um, had to call them B-A because they couldn't call them what it really meant. Yeah, right. They, they, they could have, but they... I mean, that's true, right? Yeah, it was I, badass. I think it is badass, but then they just decided, uh, yes, that was as close as that they could get for a TV show. All right, we're about six miles to our first break. Six miles to our first break. <laughs> All right. Both, both commercially and physically. Um, well, that's good. That's good. You know, that we mentioned on the podcast uh, last week that we've got Camp Lobo uh, in effect, and... Uh, now we are uh, actually actualizing this even further by adding another another uh, camper, another happy camper. Um, you know, it's interesting because we're, we're we're talking today about attitude and bringing up our attitudes. <laughs> you know, it's not not always easy to uh, be a self-made person, and it's not always easy to uh, being green. Being green, certainly not easy being green. Certainly not easy trying to produce your own show, trying to, um, uh, you know, make art. Um, all of those things are difficult. And as a result, uh, sometimes real life doesn't, isn't always with you. Sometimes the universe isn't on your side when you're trying to do all this jackassery. So, uh, life's I think- a piece of shit. When you look at yeah, it, there you go, Paul. We can't say that. Do, 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 we cannot. Do, do, do. We're not. But it's a Monty Python song. That's what he says. In the I song. know what he says in the song. Wouldn't that be censorship if I had to change it? It's only. It's only censorship. Help! Help! I'm being repressed. Yeah, that's right. It's only censorship 
if uh, the government forces you to do it. It's not censorship when the producer of the show it's doesn't want to do it. It's not censorship when Mr. Lobo tells you to knock that off. That's right. A good soldier knows when to when to quit. Die. Yeah, and when to die. <laughs> Um, we are, uh, like I said, trying to improve our attitudes. We're talking about, you know, uh, not being so down on ourselves, not being so uh, critical of ourselves, not being so, you know, letting things bother us, letting every setback eat us up, letting every problem destroy us. I think that that's really common with artists. Uh, there's that sort of who's he think he is kind of syndrome where you're thinking like, well, why do I get to do this? You know, other people aren't trying to do this sort of thing. Maybe I should just get a job at McDonald's or rob a bank. Right? Are those, are those are the I old, think those were the options. Only two options, right? I always love it when people, filmmakers all come to me and say, oh, you know what? I'm having trouble getting distribution for my movies. You know, I think I'm just going to go quit and get a job at McDonald's. Like We got that, that backwards. It's either work at McDonald's or work your dream job. The other one was we could either buy a scratch, we could either buy a scratch off ticket or rob a bank. Or rob a bank. That's the only way you can make money. And, and yeah, the thing that I always say is like, so there's nothing in between no. having your ultimate dream job and working at McDonald's. It's just the two extremes it's, and nothing in that, between. There's nothing in between. You either kind of totally give it up or uh, you know, no compromises. You either either get 100% or you fail. There's, there's no, nothing in between. Uh, then the other thing was what? Yeah, you get a scratch or you rob a bank. We're going to scratch or you rob a bank. Because it's expensive to rob a bank. So you got to win the lottery first. So then you can, so you can rob the bank, right? Well, I guess. I or do you rob the bank so you can buy a bunch of lottery tickets so you can, so you can improve, well, no, no, increase no, your no, chances? You're, you're making this too complex. Come on. You're making me think. I, I didn't come here to think. Fine. What, you, didn't, you, didn't, you, you, well, you didn't come anywhere. We're going somewhere. <laughs> Man, how did I become the chauffeur? I mean, we got to set the stage here. I'm the chauffeur. Paul's driving. You're you're in the back seat with Dixie. I miss Dixie. We're driving Miss Dixie. Driving Miss Dixie. Di Dixie <laughs> is now Paul. That is a bold faced lie. Well, I am not in the back seat with Dixie. <laughs> and you just it wanted was the to theater make, of you the just mind. wanted to do the driving Miss Daisy joke. It's the theater of the mind. They didn't know that. They, they didn't you you just pulled you know, back the curtain and you, ruined it all. You do that all the you, time. You pulled, so a, now you pulled it's a my me turn. on me. Yeah, I pulled a Paul on you. <laughs> or I totally destroyed the illusion. I am not in the back seat. Paul is not chauffeuring me. He is not my Cato. Now I know how the soup is made. That's this is not uh, fun anymore. I we are we are driving the Lobo Mobile. <laughs> the Lobo wagon? Uh, and Dixie is, Dixie uh, doesn't like to drive, and I don't blame her. I don't like to drive either. Um, Paul likes to drive. I love right? to drive. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. I like to drive. You're a driver. I'm a driver. Paul's a driver. Um, so uh, so Paul's doing the driving. Uh, we are we are doing, we've supplied the automobile. Paul su supplied the, the driver. Foot. The foot. and. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the foot in this equation. <laughs> Two and ten and a foot. Uh, so uh, we are uh, on our way to pick up Aaron. We are looking to... Um, Aaron has been working on a JAG. Uh, Aaron does a lot of filmmaking projects for other people. Uh, he had to do uh, closed captioning on one movie. He had to edit a trailer. This sounded like a nightmare. Edit single words out of a, tra out of a movie trailer. Not having had, the original file and then trying to match the music so that you don't notice that the words are missing. At least he didn't have to edit. He, at least he had to edit out single words and not edit in single words. That would sound very weird if he had to just edit it wow. single word, word by word, a 30 second spot, word by yes. word. Yes, the yes, the, the the word iguana has to appear somewhere in this trailer. <laughs> so, uh, look so, out for that iguana. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Paul and I are. I uh, thought we would be fun to do uh, a podcast on our way to pick up Aaron. And boy, were we wrong! <laughs> yeah, this was really a mistake. Uh, oh, and, oh, oh! We we're supposed to be up. Sorry, and, this is great. And a podcast on our way back with Aaron. That would be fun. And then Aaron can can also supply something to the. We'll probably be so jet lagged and probably be like, "Get this thing out of my face!" And it'd probably be like. Uh, yeah, and so Aaron is going to be a zombie because he's been working on two or more productions. I think he also did another uh, production where he was supposed to, uh, he was doing a shoot and he was supposed to end at two and it ended at four. So he ended up working an extra 
three hours uh, past uh, what he wanted to. So Aaron, Aaron has a lot of people abusing his good nature, and we are we are more people <laughs> who will be abusing his yes. good nature. Hopefully, you had to get out the whips uh, and chains this afternoon, and oh, yes, the rack. Hopefully, and. we have a much milder shit show for him here in Pennsylvania. I guess we can't say shit show. <laughs> can't say shit show. But, uh, you um, gotta bring that back around. It's gotta be a positive. Uh, um, uh, the world's greatest the world's shit show. Great. World's oh, great. The greatest oh, shit show right. on earth. Um, I think that's our signal that we're gonna be going for a break here. All right, all right. Well, the, the GPS is telling us that we're almost we're at We're almost wah. at Hawa. 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 Whatever, Hawa. Whatever, Hawa. however it pronounces Hawa. it. Hawa. 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 Ooh la la. I think she said ooh la la at one point. Yeah, well, that Do was Do you the thing. want ooh la la? That GPS is trying to give you a happy ending we- call. <laughs> 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 uh, can you step out of the car for a few minutes? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> anyway, it's, 40, it's 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Paul, am I interrupting you? Were you going to say something? Uh, no, I, I was going to say, when we come back from commercial break, it could be fun listening to me argue with the GPS trying to get it to the field. Yes, yeah, trying to get back on track. <laughs> but Wawa is a is the world's uh, best gas station where they make food uh, items as well. And, and if you were out of the state, if you were in if the you West, yeah, West Coast, what would it be? You have never heard of it. No, there's nothing that compares to yeah. Wawa. Hashtag not, AM, hashtag not, hashtag sponsored. not sponsored. AM, AM, PM used to be good when I was a kid where you could get like your chicken sandwiches. Piggly Wiggly, I your, guess. And you're, we don't, well, see, we don't have Piggly Wiggly in California. I don't know what they would have out, out what, what, what compares to Wawa. What about in the UK? But uh, the UK? Wawa is a, a great convenience store slash gas station. We're going to pick up some lunch. Why don't you pick up some lunch for yourself or a snack? And we'll be right back with more sleepless nights of insomnia. We saw somebody murdered. Some sort of ritual across the river. A girl got stabbed. Two men witness an unspeakable evil and get trapped in an unbelievable nightmare. 20th Century Fox presents Race with a Dugora. Starring Peter Fonda and Warren Oates. They're trying to screw with our brains. So what are we going to do about it? There was nowhere they could hide. They've seen us. There was no one they could trust. Did anybody hear anything? Didn't anybody see anything? There was nothing they could do but run and fight and race with the Begora. When you race with the Begora. you'd better be faster than hell. Peter Fonda and Warren Oates in Race with the Begora. Rated PG. Parental guidance suggested. You missed a lot of lively conversation here at the Wawa. Uh, you're not dreaming, we're back with more sleepless nights. Uh, voice command. Say a command. Find place. Speak the name of a place. Philadelphia International Airport. Look, now I don't have to yell at 50 nines because we're actually recording. Did you say oak? None of those. None of those whatsoever. Did you say oak? Oak. <laughs> oak. <Yes. laughs> like the tree or Professor Oak. Maybe Back. you're looking for a Pokemon. Back. Speak the name of a place. P H I. No L. P-H-L, Paul. P-H-L? Searching for PJ's coffee. No. <laughs> Back. <laughs> Who the hell is Bib? Speak the name Bib- of a place. Bib- Gosh damn it. Relax, it's okay. P-H-L. We'll get there eventually. We're getting There's there. like a line of cars honking nope. at Paul, right. by the Didn't way. Get it. P-H-L. <laughs> Did you say DHL? Nope. You say DHL, Speak Paul? The name of a place. Nope. Main menu. Nope. Let's get out of here. <clears throat> so we're on the road here, as on you can tell. On the road again. Just can't wait to be on the road again. The life I love is making movies with my friends. Ah. And I can't wait to get on the road again. Found uh, it. So, Mr. Lobo, uh, Dixie, and Paul. Now, Dixie's saying there's inherent racism in the show. No, what? I did not say racism. <laughs> sexism. Passive racism. That's what you said, right? <laughs> that there's passive racism on the show? Sexism. We're going the wrong way, folks. We are? Oh, Sorry. According to the GPS, I gotta turn around. Construction was reported on Conchester Highway. You are on the fastest route. I think we need to get Dixie. We should have bought a third microphone, I guess, so that Dixie could have her own microphone. 
I mean, we could, we could probably try to, uh-oh. Huh. <laughs> my microphone fell apart. I was trying to give Dixie my microphone. <laughs> was any of that recorded? And uh, I think it might have been. I felt like some of that was recorded. Um, I don't know if you can hear this. This is uh, the very famous, world famous Wawa pretzel, which I, I always I call a bagel somehow. I don't know why. I guess because it's, it's delicious in the way that a bagel is delicious. Wow, this was a bad idea. This right here is a bad idea. Oh, yeah, you might want to back up and be, be, be I, more angled the other I can't direction. See. <laughs> I think you should just go straight and then turn oh, around. Oh, telling you just turn around. Who's driving here? I don't know. <laughs> We're all what failing. Car is it? That's the question I mm -hmm. have to ask. A bad idea all around. I'm going for it. Wee oh, God. Yee haw. Spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch. Here we go, folks. Wow. Hold on to your butts. That your last words will be we. We, Dixie's <laughs> last words will be we. And you'll have heard it here on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is like the black box on an airplane. <laughs> They're going to find this. Are you this, allowed to say black box? Uh, the um, African-American box? Mm, certain ethnic box, maybe. Certain ethnic box? Well, is box that is vague enough? The UK. The boxes from the UK could still be a certain ethnic okay. box, right? But it can't be African American. No, it can't be African American if it's from England. And I don't know where this. African, what? Do they say like African European? African Britain? Or African European? No, they don't do that because they're intelligent. They don't need to define <laughs> people in that way. Anyway, we're here, we're driving, we're going. And we're on our way, hopefully, to the airport. The plane is supposed to be touching down at five o'clock, which is uh, only really ten minutes from now. Yeah. Somehow, how did we get so late? And according to this, our arrival is five thirty-eight. So we, so Aaron is just going to be sitting and waiting for us for a half an hour, probably. Well, in the second podcast, we can get to listen to how pissed off Aaron is for having to make. Yes, it late. in the next podcast, you will get to hear how. Which I don't blame him. Angry Aaron will be that we're late. I'm angry for him. Um, we're all angry at ourselves. That was the thing I was talking about before. Is that um, you know I, I, there's an old saying that depression is just anger without enthusiasm. And what's impression? And we have a lot of angry young folks here uh, in in the arts. Turn right on uh, US One North. I think anybody, I think it was probably one of the worst times in history to try to do anything creative. But at the same time, one of the best times in history because the tools are so available. Um, so uh, at a certain point, you just got to get over yourself and just do what you are here to do. Make the best of your abilities because if, you if you have a talent, share it. You know, if you, if you know something, teach it. You know, God. don't don't wait. Um, you know, we only have a we only have a certain amount of time to do the things that we that we can do or able to do. So we might as well do it. You know, and if you can't run, walk, and if you can't walk, crawl, and if you can't crawl, just scream real loud. And maybe Paul will come by and be the chauffeur. And maybe and drive Paul you there. Will, will drive you there. So um, we're getting ready to pick up Aaron. We're going, Aaron has come all the way from California uh, to here in the middle of and nowhere, Pennsylvania. what state Pennsylvania. is California in? State, <laughs> state of denial, a state of uh, insanity, a uh, state of confusion. Land of confusion. Yeah. Da, 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 there we go. Da, 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 These are da, da, da. the hands we're given. I thought you said that there was no genesis on this podcast. I didn't say there was no Genesis. I said there was no Phil Collins. Oh, but Phil that's Collins very sings different. that one. Yeah, for some reason he's tolerable when he's part of Genesis. When you get into like the no jacket required Phil Collins, that's a, like a totally different Su ball Su game. Studio. Su uh, Su Studio. Mm -hmm. Now is that song just about a studio? I don't know. Without the T being pronounced? Was he just in the studio and there was something blocking part of the sign? In the studio. Oh. oh. Stu, Stu, studio. So, I'm eating a, um, a pretzel that tastes like a 
Are you sure it's not a it's like a pretzel? It chews like a but it tastes like a pretzel. And they have an everything pretzel. Ooh, they have an everything pretzel? Yeah. Oh my God. Can we go back? All right. So we're here in this podcast. This this is we're in our second. This is the first time we've ever tried a mobile podcast. A mobile podcast. We've got our mobile uh, recording equipment. Um, whenever you're not unplugging it. And we'll, whenever I'm not unplugging it, <laughs> you know, I, my intentions were good. I wanted to share the audio with Dixie, but Dixie doesn't want to talk. Is that right? I guess that's correct. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> Dixie is probably one of the smartest, which is probably why she doesn't talk on these things, because she knows better. <coughs> but Dixie's probably one of the smartest people that I know, and she always has something interesting to say about everything. But she doesn't always want to share her thoughts with everyone about the things she has opinions on, because Dixie has opinions. And they are... Um, i got more opinions. She's got more opinions. <laughs> Yeah. We were going to sneak the She's microphones out in the other room. She's when, the law. When she had her buddies out to record a secret podcast on them because they were all yak, yakking it up. Yeah, yeah. Dixie had some friends over, and they were a lot more interesting than Paul and I. We almost started recording on yeah. uh, It was funny because it, it started with them bitching about us talking about Star Wars all the time, and all we ever do is talk about Star Wars. And then they went and proceeded to talk about Star Wars for themselves like mm -hmm. for like two hours. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right. That's the magic of not talking about Star Wars, is that it always somehow <laughs> devolves into talking about Star Wars. That's what always happens. That kind of goes along with the thing of... I always talk about trends, you know, if you're like... If you are a person that follows trends, where something's popular and you want to jump on it just because it's popular, well, they're always so, the, the type of person, and, and I've been this type of person in my life, where I will want to hate something just because it's popular. And then I realized, well, I'm just as much of a slave to convention as that person that likes something just because it's popular. If I hate it just because it's popular. You'd be that, the internet. That's the other side. Yeah, I'm the, I'd be the internet. <laughs> Good one, Paul. Thank you. I would just be on the, uh, just the other side of the same coin. You know, to hate something just because it's popular is the same trip as liking something because it's popular. You're still a slave to convention. You're still a pretentious twit. Ultimately, you have to follow what you like and not what people tell you to like or what you think you should like. Right, Paul? Uh, tell me what I'm supposed to answer here. All right, never mind. <laughs> yes, you said you're supposed to agree. Yes, I agree. All right. I'll I agree with everything you said. Thank you. So, Phil Collins. Phil Collins. The main lyric came about as Collins was improvising lyrics to a drum machine track he had programmed. Susa Studio was wording that scanned well. After trying to find an alternative word to fit the rhythm, the singer decided to keep Sus Studio as the song title and lyric. What's okay. it supposed to be? It's not supposed to be anything. It was the sound he was making was into a drum sound. machine. So he just made that sound, but he, he just didn't cu couldn't find a real word that rhymed with what he... Was so he, he invented to. a new word. So he yeah. was, he's the precursor of, of Lobo and I. We just invented our own words. That's right. And that's sort of like the Legata da Vida kind of thing. Yeah, in Agata da Vida, only it's the reverse, right? Because it is actually in the Garden of Eden yeah. is the song. But everyone says, in Agata da Vida. Because he was drunk on stage. And he was drunk. And then Phil Collins, who's probably also drunk on stage. Was came up with Sissa Studio, but then for some reason couldn't come up with anything that rhymes with Sissa Studio, which really, just a studio, I guess just a studio would be really hard to say, right? I don't know, I can say Stew, that. stew, studio? No, you don't say stew. Stew. Stew, stew, studio. Stew, stew, studio. No? Uh, oh. No, we, our studio is a goddamn mess. Can we say goddamn? <laughs> it's your show. God damn it. I don't know. I passed this one by Miss Mittens, who decided that she didn't want to come out in the cold. Miss Mittens did not want to drive and be in this car. Miss Mittens does not like to go outside. She doesn't like the There's possibility. There's enough smells in this car to actually add fertilizer to the mix. That's true. She would have liked all the extra BS. But 
she she doesn't like the possibility of being identified by fans. She's definitely yeah. The the, the sunglasses don't work very well. No, for her. she hates the fans too, which is really bad. She's real sour about the whole the whole prospect of you know being pseudo famous. But anyhow, that's Miss Studio famous. That's Miss yeah, Studio famous. Um, oh oh. How are we doing on time? I don't know. I think it's almost time for another break. Okay. Right, because it's 12 minutes? Yep. Mm-hmm. So um, when we come back, we're going to talk about, I guess, the studio. Yeah. Because we, we've been cleaning all day in preparation for Aaron. And I can take a hit of, hit of whiskey here. Gargle with some razor blades, yeah. take a hit of tequila so you can get your, your stutter yeah. and your scrabble. Make sure you have that, that label nice and hidden in case we get pulled over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got my mouthwash bottle. We can just transfer it. Gross. All right. Well, thank you uh, for listening to and indulging us here on uh, the Sleepless Nights podcast, and we'll be right back. Hey, Mr. Lobo. I, oh, Paul, what's I, up? I have a question here about this 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 memo that I got from you. It says that Besto TV now needs a commercial. Oh, whoever wrote that should get fired. I think I'm not quite sure what to put into said commercial uh for besto tv i mean you know you just talk about your channel like creative continuity and its sister show bonus content right all the convention culture and the interviews with celebrities and all that stuff sure well i guess i could also mention the cosplay montages costumes costumes right uh astonishing cosplay montage set to an epic soundtrack i I guess there's convention rewind too those are great we've run those on osi 74 so i guess that's all i need so i I guess i'll are you sure because there's i think there's one other show that you produce for that for a besto, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. With with Mr. Lobo, yeah, what with, that we do together, the thing that we do. Remember all those videos we did? Oh, like Mr. Lobo does. Yes, yes, Mr. Lobo does. Of course, that's awesome. I'm going to get right on this. And I'm going to write up the script. Hey, wait, Paul, you forgot to tell him to go to besto.tv or YouTube.com/slash besto TV. Idiot. It's Buda Gonzalez. And this is Domino. And we're here to talk to you about our show, Bizarre Transmissions from the Bermuda Triangle. Breaking you get. Are you ready? You see, our show features wild and one-of-a-kind music videos of all genres. <laughs> Buda, don't forget, we also have artist spotlights, special guests, and demented humor. Hey! That's right, it's all part of OSI 74's Secret Sundays. And we're back with the Sleepless Nights podcast. Um, Dixie gave us some very interesting information about Phil Collins and the, st- and the song Sussudio, which Would I you guess- look at this guy? This guy's like making a left turn all the way around the freaking United States. Like turn your blink, oh I'm sorry, you were speaking. Oh, oh that's all right, that's all right. A lot of interesting drivers out on the road today. Now, who? The, what was the the bumper sticker that you saw, Dixie? It was the uh, the shocker. And what is the shocker? That's uh, two two in the pink and one in the stink. And what does that mean? It's uh, it's, it's lewd. It's too lewd to talk. But how do you, how does it how is it depicted? How, what's on the sticker? It's just a hand. It's the, it's uh, a hand. Oh, it, it was the it the was ring the ring finger. It was live long and prosper, wasn't it? No. It's not Mr. Spock, no. Not, no. Minus one finger? The ring finger was folded down. So the ring finger is folded down, and then you got a two-finger point, which is okay normally, because I do a two-finger point. But if you extend the But then you extend pinky, the pinky, it becomes something. It becomes, it becomes stinky. Uh, what's called the shocker. Mm-hmm. And what is that from? Is that from a, a, is that a, what is that, who, who uses that? Is that connected to a particular? I'm, I'll, I'll go particular band is it a particular uh, is it sports it's a gross thing that people talk about they actually use google like on a this dutch show? oven a dutch oven what's a dutch oven in fact oh. i don't know what a dutch oven is <laughs> dutch ovens when you fart under the blankets and then you put it over your wife's head i thought it was when you like crapped on somebody's chest <laughs> no that's no. a coney island steamer <laughs> all right well then what's oh, a blumpkin cuz i'm not oh, clear Jesus. totally on that I guess. Hold on. I don't want to know. Do we want right. to go down this rabbit hole? I don't know. I'm Do eating, I want to take know, this nat- NyQuil and go down this rabbit hole? I am eating here. So Morpheus holds out the DayQuil and the NyQuil. Right. And the day, does the NyQuil take you down the rabbit hole? And what does the DayQuil do? Just stops your nose from sniffling? I, I think so. 
makes sense. The day cold keeps you awake, and the night will put you to sleep. So. I guess. I guess that's the true. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing. How the hell but, did I end up on my kitchen floor medicine? But aren't you sleeping already? I mean, isn't that supposed to be an awakening where you you are you're not really entering a fantasy world? You're waking up to find out that your real life is a is a sham. Well, maybe it's the maybe it's opposite world. Maybe but, you have to go to sleep in the matrix to wake up in the real world. You got to go to sleep in the matrix to wake up in the real world, which is really the matrix. I feel like the, the Wikipedia article on the shocker was written by a ten-year-old. Right. Maybe, maybe it was written by um. Dixie with the in-depth. What is it? Um, Sean journalism. Scott or what was the guy's name? What? Oh, never mind. Who was the ten-year-old wrote the shocker Wikipedia? Yeah. What does it say? It says the ring finger and thumb are curled or bent down while the other fingers are extended. The index and middle fingers are kept together, touching the back of. The hand, wait, it says touching. That doesn't make sense. And this is, and the back of the hand faces outwards, away from the gesturer. The gesture refers to the act of inserting the index and middle fingers into a and the little finger into the receiver's Hence the shock. That's literally all it says in the whole article. Wow. Oh, and it's in the related articles, Obscene Gestures. Obscene... Yeah, gestures. How do you say that word? Because it always sounds like gestures. a clown to me. Obsa obscene gestures. Gestures. Not a gesture. Yeah, but it comes out of my mouth wrong. An obscene gesture. Gesture. Allegai. Uh, <laughs> al oh, yeah, allegai. Allegai. You want to know what a blumpkin is? Why'd you have to show me that? <laughs> Man. Uh, all right. I want to petition to have that deleted from my memory. Yeah, we all need to get a mind wipe. Okay. Uh, emphasis on wipe. Ladies, like twice. And gen ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to apologize. Uh, I think there are some inherent I dangers need my wife. to I need my driving mind wiped back and to trying front. to podcast at the same time. <laughs> um, my wife's so smart. Blah blah blah. My now, wife. Now she's going to teach us all about disgusting sex acts. Oh, disgusting Nobody's gestures and disgusting gestures right and gestures. sex acts with gestures. Oh no. Uh, so, uh, the greatest shit show on earth, ladies so and gentlemen. What about the Sista Studio? <laughs> the Sista yeah, Studio. Like so, cleaning up the studio, um, and it's been really rough going. I, I have come to the discovery that Dixie and I are hoarders. Yeah, we found like three dead cats under a pile of newspaper. And a mysterious well, didn't you old buy those person. last week? The dead cats? Yeah, I thought you bought those last week. Yeah. They were definitely bought dead. We didn't. <laughs> It wasn't yeah. like they were there. And they, then it died. wasn't neglect. No, we, they started dead. They we just started dead. We just now they're just further dead. We just forgot that we had them. So, um, first of all, Dixie is a very creative person, and she has a lot of ideas for projects. I'm a very creative person. I have a lot of ideas for projects outside of cinema insomnia, outside of uh, movies I want to make. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And including movies I want to make in Cinema Insomnia, uh, I, I find things and I go, oh, this would be great on a show, or this would this would be funny for something, and I hang on to them. On a top of that, both Dixie and I are collectors. We like uh, Dixie likes mid-century modern stuff. She likes horror stuff. She collects videotapes. I like movie stuff, movie memorabilia. Uh, I like toys. Uh, so I collect things. We and have like 4,000 VHS tapes. We have 4,000 VHS and tapes, and that's probably a, 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 a conservative estimate. And um, Very we, conservative estimate, because I think my bed's made out of VHS tapes. <laughs> like the place, yeah, I got upgraded from the floor, and now I get a bed, but it's all made out of VHS tapes. And well, Paul, the floor was actually more comfortable. If you didn't have, if we didn't have all those VHS tapes, you'd be still, you'd still be on the floor. I might prefer the floor. All right, fine. Yeah. I well, mean, we could upgrade you to like the Disney Black Diamond, uh, cushy. The the clam shells. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like a kind that of like softness. a. Yeah. They like it's like memory foam that you those can, clam shells. You can sleep in a whole new world. Mm -hmm. No. A whole new blah blah blah, blah brand blah, new. Blah. Can we not? Can we not well, Aladdin? You don't like Aladdin? Can we not Aladdin? Can uh, we not Aladdin.com? Right. 
What was that? Oh, I have no idea what that is. I don't either. I I feel like you're disparaging Sleeping Beauty, and I will not stand for that because Sleeping Beauty. Because you're sitting, and we're in the car. I am sitting. You can't really stand. I can't really stand for anything. If you do stand, remember remember to roll away from the tires. Mm -hmm. Um. No, I. I mean, but that's so we have a lot of stuff that we've saved, and we just like a goldfish. We just keep growing. You only have a three-second memory. In re- in that too. Okay. In relationship to how much space we have. On top of this, because our careers as artists is spotty, and we don't, you know, uh, there's feast and famine, and we we never really know how much money we're going to be making from month to month. Why do they come up with that term, feces and famine? No, it's feast and famine. Oh, I've been writing it wrong my whole oh, life. Oh man, Paul. Oh. So oh, I'm gonna get some hate mail. So we we did. We got into the business of buying and selling collectibles. And so we entered another realm of hoarding stuff. So now um, when it came time to, okay, well now it's time to make some more TV shows. um, We've realized that our house is just rafters to ceilings with kitschy crap and eclectic crap as Paul likes to say. So. I kind of would say that, but I would stumble over my tongue 50 times in order to say that. Clap the clap the clap. Look at that. So, so it's been rough. I mean, and almost to tears cleaning this house. And I've been in a lot of tears mm-hmm. this past mm-hmm. week. And we have a few, quite a few tears on Patreon, but those are different kinds of tears. We have a tear for our uh, patrons to do. Nice to, segue. Mm-hmm. If you ha- if you enter a, at the ten dollar tier. We have a lovely button set that we give people. And we've been this getting- is my term where I say hashtag plugged. Hashtag the, plugged. And we have been getting um, a lot of support from our fans, not only through the cash they're giving us on the Patreon, but we had um, a hard, uh, two hard drives sent to us. One, we have an eight terabyte hard drive that was gifted to us. Um, by uh, it's a sleepless night, light, uh, sleepless night, Matthew Fox, and then sleepless night, Kim. Um, I don't yay. know where the mic is to make that noise. Uh, she she sent right? us uh, a five terabyte. Uh, what is it? Thunderbolt, uh, which is a portable uh, drive for Aaron. More so for Max. Uh, for more so for Max, and it's beautiful. It's this little cute orange little pod. It just looks like it's from outer space, and it stores stuff. And it's uh-huh. it's got this sort of rubberized shell around the whole thing, and it's uh, bright orange, um, and which is nice. O- OSI colors, and so uh, so now we have plenty of space to store video. I just wish we had as much space to store. <laughs> bless you, bless you, Thank Dixie. You. Much things That's to store, to you by Dixie. <laughs> store things in the real world as we did storage for. I mean, I wish we had patrons who'd come to our house and help us clean <laughs> and give us. And come by and digitize, digitize your whole house to store it on a hard maybe drive. Maybe we can maybe get your a, whole house can be stored on a hard drive. Maybe we could just ask them to help us hire an or, a professional organizer. Mm-hmm. Maybe that needs to be a stretch goal to get a professional organizer. Maybe that organizer. just needs to be an episode. Mm-hmm. We need to record it, especially if you have a drill sergeant running behind you. Right. Mr. Right. Lobo! So I'm going to take a, take a peek here at the time. We're at 11.38. That's pretty close, right? Yeah, it looks like it's time to, to take, take another break. break. Um, so I'm going to choke down the rest of this um, uh, lovely pretzel. Did you um, see that? What the heck? What kind of people do you... What's that hand gesture mean? Look up uh, that hand gesture. That's a whole see. new hand gesture. We got a whole new hand gesture to decipher. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do, um, so we'll be hand a jester. Gesture. It was a hand gesture. Yes. So we'll be, wearing we'll be back with more obscenities after these messages. Thank you. Battered, shattered, creamed and reamed, soaring to glory in their mean machines. Death Race 2000, David Carradine, Simone Griffiths, she's young, he's crazy. There's nothing they won't do at 200 miles an hour. Hold on. Death Race 2000. God help anyone who gets in their way. Ah! Death Race, a cross-country road wreck. Rated R, under 17, not admitted without parent. You kiss your mother with that mouth? Holy cow!
Oh, man. Freaking people in Philadelphia, I swear. Well, you know, Paul, if if you didn't drive like a total asshole. Hey, it says one way, I'm only driving one way. Okay, okay, okay. I guess it's all relative. Um, you're not. Quarters of a mile. Keep right. You stay out of this. Yeah, there's our Coco. Our, our, we're our, we're, get, we're getting a little Miss Garmin? heated here, Miss Garmin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Garmin Bozia, Miss Pain and Suffering. Um, so I am eating uh, still my. Um, this this is a long lasting. Um, everlasting. Everlasting gobstopper of a pretzel. Everlasting pretzel. Um, it also reminds me of. Do uh, you remember the candy bar they had? Um, Marathon bar. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Where it was like, it was really wasn't that long. Yeah, I, I always mean, thought it was like three feet long as a kid, but it, it really the candy bar was maybe like a foot long. Can you see anybody? Can I get over there? Oh, that guy's yeah. yeah. Right. I think they're letting you in. That's nice. All the right. first nice person on the About road. Damn time. All day. Got a friend in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. So um, what you eat marathon bars? Is it is the marathon how many of them you can eat before you puke? Is that the idea? I guess, but. You know, I would get one for a movie, like at the drive-in, and it would last. I think I'd end up taking some of it home, you know, as a kid. I, I was, but I, there was another one, too, and I, I guess Charleston Shoe, right? Is that the other one? Is that the sequel to Marathon? Sequel? <laughs> I don't know. Look it up on IMDb. Mar- Charleston, but I think Charleston Shoe is regular size. But maybe it will used to be big. Oops. Like a, like a marathon bar, but I felt like there were two varieties. I felt like there was the marathon bar and then there was another one that was an oversized candy bar. But, you know, like well, everything what, else, Toblerone, they, is, they, oversized. Toblerone is sort of long, yeah. Usually, usually you don't do a Toblerone in one sitting. Hey, there's a Target up here. Should we do a Mr. Lobo does Target? We've got a couple we get a request for Mr. Lobo. I guess because they saw the Target bag in your little setup uh, in the studio. But uh, uh, Paul posted a picture of the studio, and he had uh, he said that there might be some spoilers for the new season. And everyone was obsessed with this one area on his desk that had just a crumpled up Target, target bag. bag. So they wanted Keep to know what was right in the Target bag. And oddly Charlie. enough. There was something in the target bag for a future Mr. Episode. Lobo, uh, do, right. not necessarily Mr. Lobo does, but maybe a Mr. Lobo taste test uh, or reviews, Mr. Lobo review, Mr. Like Lobo that. tries. Not an there unboxing. Is light traffic on your route. Oh, just what we need. Light traffic. Light traffic. What the hell is light traffic? There's light cycles. They're going to cut us light off. Light cycles. Build a wall so in front of us. I have to against Tron to get to the damn you have airport. To, you have to, you have, you know, don't, it's bad. We're going to go on the game grid to get to this airport. So. Um, we are still headed toward the pick the ball up. Um, no, not picking Paul up. Oh, that's right. We're not picking, picking Paul up. Picking I'm, Aaron I'm up. Um, we're talking a little bit about um, our filthy this is house, studio. which is a studio, home, filthy home studio, slash, and uh, uh, trying to have a better attitude. Right. That's the that's the theme. I guess it's a cleaning up all the get cleaning up the inside and the outside. Trying to get our selves in a better headspace and also trying to get our actual space in a better space in a better headspace yes try to get our space in a better space and our headspace in a better space in outer space and our out and outer at outer space international in two and three quarter miles keep left to conchester road conchester 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 we were That's making a fun of Dixie word. how she was pronouncing things, and now, you know, this, this GPS pronounces a lot of things really funny. Yeah, Wawa was funny, right? Wawa. There was one, Dixie, what was the funny thing where we had... San um, Francisca. San Francisca, yeah, we borrowed a... What was it? It wasn't a Garmin. Tom, Tom. What was it? Tom Tom. Tom Tom. A mojo <laughs> lent us his yeah. Tom Tom to get to... Was it to get to uh, the Devo concert? Yeah. <laughs> so... So no, it wasn't the Tom Tom so, Club. No, like, how did they all go? How did they all go together again? Because everything was double syllable. There. Oh, okay. It was so Mojo. Mojo Tom gave Tom me the Tom Tom for Devo. Devo. Yes. <laughs> did you Tivo the Devo? We didn't the Tivo the Devo with the Tom Tom, but Mojo. we had a Tom Tom, and the Tom Tom told us that the exit was for San Francisca. 
I don't know where those letters came from. But it was like raining so hard, the rain was like going sideways, and Lobo was laughing so hard that we almost died. We all, we, yeah, we almost got into a serious accident because I couldn't stop laughing every time the, isn't the, the San Tom Tom said San Francisco. Isn't that the isn't that the uh, number seven at Chili's? Isn't that? The San, San Francisco, Francisco, yeah, that is. That's, a, that's, you order that, but you don't order the hot bung. No. Nobody eats the hot bung. Don't eat no hot, warmed don't, bung. No. That's repugnant. Um, <laughs> don't order, never order the hot bung at never Chili's. The hot there bung. is currently light traffic oh, on the Oh, shut up. Light traffic, meaning we're dead stopped. We're dead stopped. Yeah. It's not moving anywhere. No. But it's light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you were to weigh it. This is, um, you know, right now traffic is totally dead. We're about we're, maybe what? Why don't you uh, give us the traffic report there, Mr. Lovell? It's, we're about 10 minutes from the airport. Um, I suppose there's a, there must be a big rig jackknifed somewhere up the road because we are dead stopped in the middle of the street. Um, there's traffic moving the other direction, of course, just to mock us. They're and, pointing um, and laughing. I'm oh. still eating my, my pretzel. It tastes like a bagel. I choose like a bagel. I already finished my mozzarella sticks, so. I Paul finishes mozzarella sticks. I got the better deal. Mine, mine lasted longer. Yeah. Yeah, but your um, mine, mine's gonna have good recourse a little bit later my, in the show. I actually make sure try to have some of this coffee real quick. Oh baby. Hashtag not sponsored. Sponsored, not sponsored. Or what's the thing we were gonna say? We were gonna have. We had a whole new one, which I can't remember. Oh, hashtag no hashtag. Hashtag no hashtag. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have a hashtag, we just say hashtag no, no hashtag. hashtag. Right. Yeah. Sounds sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. Just like hashtag hashtag Sharon Stone. Mm -hmm. so whenever we say Sharon, we can have mm -hmm. hashtag Sharon Stone, hashtag Sunny Sunny and Sharon. Yeah, those are for all for the um, unboxing where we have our like and share and share and share alike and bleeds over. Sharon Stone and Sunny and share. Um, just basically trying to find any juvenile play on words. Yeah, just to show how dumb we are. You're so stupid. It's stupid. Anyway. So um, we're excited to pick up Aaron. Uh, I hope Aaron is happy to see us. He said he's going to be a zombie when we pick him up. So it'll be interesting to see how talkative he's going to be. The second episode will be hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they expect a lot of that next episode, but even that might be better than this episode. So um, it's hard to say. Uh, it's hard to know if this is working or not. We're all a little distracted just because of the traffic and uh, the getting cut off and the obscenities and the, the, the uh, obscene the gestures and the obscene gestures and all the stuff that's happening out there. Um, and, um, you know... The, this whole concept and, and trying to deal with how to un, how do we unsexist this podcast I think if Dixie would want to talk more uh, and she had her own microphone we could two turntables you know then, it, then we'd have two ladies we'd have Miss Mittens and Dixie you don't get along well you know you guys might but that might be exciting if you guys have some some arguments or some banter right Count point counterpoint Two ladies, two 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 strong-minded uh, 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 friends of Mr. Lobo, duking it out. No, I didn't say point counter joint. That's oh. that's uh, oh. th that. If I were still in California, that we might take it there. <laughs> but um, we are, God, hopefully, gonna get there to this place soon. Five forty-five. Yeah. I feel like maybe we should actually try to call Aaron or something. I, I feel like we could walk. Do we faster. have the phone? Did we have the foresight to bring the phone with us, Dixie? That's how I looked up what a shocker was. Oh, okay. So you uh, have the phone. So I'm maybe we can this call. Article about how the movie Monster Trucks and Shape of Water is the same movie. The movie Monster Trucks and Shape of Water is the same movie. Yeah. Wow, Apparently, that's an article. Monster trucks trying to sue must, Shape no, of Water. Must have seen the script for Shape of Water because pretty much all the plot points are exactly the same. So they try to jam a monster in a truck and try to step after the stop by three So, uh, so uh, uh, aliens? Does, 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 a, does a cleaning woman? Does a monster cle in the truck to, to help it escape from the government facility. Does a cleaning woman fall in love with a monster truck? That, I think a high school boy falls in love with a monster truck. But isn't that like There's the plot of like every alien movie? That's the plot of E.T. That's the plot of Paul. I guess that's, that's true. The plot of I mean, I don't think that Elliot wants to have sex with E.T. Well, he might. You don't know. I mean, E.T. does have the figure. I think E.T. wants to have sex with Elliot. That's probably yeah. true. 
I mean, E.T. is inherently evil. You can tell when you look at it that it's a monster. Well, E.T. the Atari game is definitely inherently evil. Oh, I, yeah, that was evil. I, I, I wasted so many hours just trying to figure out what desert it was buried in. Wong, 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 wong. Kept raising my head. Nothing would happen. My well, spaceship would never to pick game, me up. Not in life. Oh, I wasn't supposed to be raising my head and, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I wish or, I could raise my head right now and make the car fly. Mm -hmm. This sucks. The wow. E.T. game, of course, nobody knows what we're talking about, but oh. Atari, um, Atari gave the programmer like four months to make a video game based on E.T. And that guy was hot stuff. You ever see that documentary? It's exciting to, to watch, interesting to watch, I should say. Um, but um, he did a lot of high-end games. He did like what Yars Revenge. Yars Revenge. He, was he, like his biggest he was a hot piece. shot over at Atari, and they said we need a game in four months based on ET. And then they made like 75 million copies of this <laughs> game because ET was so popular. But they, you know, they didn't. Not very many people. There were more copies of that game than there were consoles. Right. So there weren't even, you know, even they would, you know, people would be having to buy copies of the multiple copies of the game to have that even that business model even make sense and supposedly they had so many copies of the game left over that they buried them at the bottom of the desert it was kind of an urban legend thing that somewhere in i can't remember it was new mexico or was it new mexico they found them. they've dug them up and they well, found them yeah i would thanks paul for spoiling Sorry. my my thing but uh, it was an ur urban legend for many years that, that that wasn't really a thing and then they did a whole documentary and they they went out to the desert and they dug up uh, where they thought the ET cartridges were and they found them supposedly allegedly so uh, I don't know what that has to do we're talking about shape of water right shape of water shape is kind of, of like ET kind of like Paul of uh, kind of like monster trucks kind of like any movie in which a human tries to protect an a, a alien, alien species from the government right correct um but we're trying to talk about how to unsexist our show. How did it, how did we get to Shape of Water? You asked about the phone. You asked about the phone because you're thinking about who we should call oh. Aaron. Well, maybe it might be a good idea to uh, maybe send a text to Aaron Hard and no. just no. Hard no find that. So, right. Dixie you know, will not be telling Aaron why we're late picking him up. I, I, for him I know this is a bad time to kind of bring this up, and I should have thought of it before mm -hmm. we left, but I really should have put pants on. Oh, Paul. We can't. Maybe this is what's making. You're gonna be maybe like this a, is the whole sexist uh, problem. Is that I'm not that does pants. definitely will keep the ladies away. I, I was worried about the um, the home security, homeland security home arresting security. you. <laughs> home security. Um, I, I'm worried about home security as well, but I'm worried about um, the uh, the TSA or um, the airport uh, security. Um, dropping you once they see you come out of this car without any pants and without any pants and wired up with a microphone I and wired, yeah <laughs> the combination of those two things they'll probably think you're like a, a human a naked human bomb i can't say and, that a naked human bomb yeah i can't say that okay all right i'll strike that from the record i um, had that removed from my brain wired up pantsless guy looking for trouble i wonder if that website exists wired up pantsless guy looking for trouble.com <laughs> Wired up pantsless guy looking for trouble. Dot com. Okay. So, um, we must be near the airport because I'm seeing a lot of fast food. Um, McDonald's. But we're not moving mm -hmm. pretty fast. We're not moving fast. The food is moving fast. Fast is the food moving. Arby's. Blah, 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 blah. The food is moving faster than we are. I really like that uh, Simpsons episode where the, where they're all, it's like Lord of the Flies and one of the kids is like, when uh, the, the after the plane crash, and when it's like, I'm so hungry, I could eat at Arby's. That's rough. I see an airplane up there. I think Aaron Lane is in the airplane. No, I think Aaron said that his plane was going to be on time after all. See, that that was the kind of thing that sort of kind of screwed us up. We thought we had a little extra time, and then it got taken back. No take backsies. No take backsies.com. Oh, I'm feeling God like once it. Aaron's skin touches the cold air, mm -hmm. he's gonna crack into a million pieces. He's gonna shatter. 
It'll like, be like Mr. Freeze. <laughs> I still see you. <laughs> Let me tell a quick story about the Batman. Oh, um, oh, oh, Batman and Robin. Here we go. So a friend of mine worked at Warner Brothers. Are you still eating that pretzel? I am still eating this pretzel. Told you it was long lasting, long chewing. Mm-hmm. Everlasting. A friend of mine worked at um, um, Warner Brothers and he gave me a script of what he was told was the Batman and Robin script. And I remember looking at it and laughing and going, they just fooled you, you know? This is not the real script. This is a script that they allowed to leak um, to, in order to protect themselves, you know? Because this, this is too ridiculous to be a real script for a real movie, you know? And um, it, was a, it was full of all these awful puns, and it was just, it was, it was just, uh, it, it just seemed like a 12-year-old wrote it. Not too far off. And then the actual movie came out, and yes, it was the real script. I was wrong. It was not a fake script that they allowed to leak. That was the actual real script with the real jokes. Sigh. And yeah, and that's what happened. I don't know. Batman and Robin gets a rough thing, and you know, I'm supposed to be like the world's advocate for, you know, they're not bad movies, just misunderstood. I think that um, in the case, if I had to defend Batman and Robin, I think that the thing that I do appreciate is at least they were trying to make it fun. Um, I think that the, it got too convoluted and I think a lot of the jokes were lame and fell flat. Um, well, they were trying to emulate what uh, was it? Joel Schumacher was doing those. Yeah, he was trying to bring back Batman '66. He w- where it's like Tim Burton went dark, and he's like, "Well, let's bring back Batman '66." Yeah, let's but he got rewarded. Revival. He got rewarded for it because uh, oh, oh, Batman Forever was a success. Yeah, that was also another one that was emulating '66. Yeah, but so he he just he just pushed it a little further than. But I felt like Batman Forever was maybe compromising a little bit, where it was somewhere between Burton's ver- vision and... Can I say two words? What? Bat credit card. Yeah, I know. It's just a joke. I mean, I guess that would have been something they would have done on the 66 Batman. I think people weren't quite ready for 66 Batman again. I'm ready Which for 66 would you rather Batman have? now. Which would you rather have? Shark repellent or the bat credit card? Oh, definitely shark repellent. Yeah? You have more uses for the shark repellent than you do the bat credit card? Oh, you mean in real life? What yeah. would I rather have, a shark repellent or a bat credit card? Either or. I guess it just all comes down to if you ever think you're going to get attacked by a shark. Because you'd feel like a fool if you turned down the shark repellent and then you ended up needing it. So does the shark repellent work on Aquaman? Well, Aquaman isn't a shark. Not per se, but you think that that he would be he would have a bad reaction to yeah, the you it would, think, you'd be you allergic think it gives him to like it? hives. Could he even get hives? Does he would just resent the fact that Batman has a shark repellent? Yeah, it's like look, that's not cool, man. You know, like, or do you think he's like, oh, you need shark repellent? I can just go. Yeah, and he just repels the sharks. <laughs> or or if it's Batman versus Aquaman, and Batman uses the shark yeah. repellent, can can Aquaman just override that fear on the shark, uh, the repellent on the shark? And allow the sharks to attack Batman anyway. Maybe you think that like like Aquaman would just just sort of override them and just control them and make them attack anyway. Is this Correct. It? That that's an interesting. Uh, I don't know. Get on that right, DC. Yeah, find someone with a pocket protector and ask them what the answer to that question is. Um, but as you were, as I was. Anyway, so uh, we were talking about um, somehow talking about Batman and Robin, and how bad it was. And, um, and having to defend Batman and Robin. And, I, and again, I think every movie is somebody's favorite movie. I have met people who like Batman and Robin. Um, I just think that uh, it, was, it was clumsily done. And I think Arnold Schwarzenegger was not strong enough of an actor to be a champagne villain. Uh, and I think there just was a lot of problems. You know, and it all, and I think that it wasn't right. The timing wasn't right for that. I, to be honest, I'm kind of ready for '66 Batman again. I feel like we've gone too dark. I'm, I'm, I'm done with being dark. Gone too dark night. Gone too dark night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Too many dark nights. So, um, you know, my life is. I don't. Loving I don't. Hell? Sorry. Well. 
I don't want to depress our audience with how, what my life is like, <laughs> but I think that if you're a young person living in the suburbs, you know, you got to wear your heavy metal t-shirt to, let, to, to pretend you got some pain in your life. I don't need to pretend I have pain in my life by enjoying a brooding dark superhero. I've got plenty of real pain in my life. So I, when I go to a movie, I'm ready for a, a something uh, fantastic and something that is better than what I've got in real life and so something waiting. a little more optimistic than what I've got in real life. So you're waiting for Fantastic Four? Keep left by so fantastic, fantastic Four, I am, four. you know, Fan four stick. Fan stick. Yes, the fan four stick. Now explain, Paul, what fan four stick means. Fan four stick is just basically the last Fantastic Four movie, but for whatever reason, marketing decided that they were going to put the four in place of what the A. The four the, in, the, in the middle, right? Yeah. So if you read it on a poster, it says fan four stick. Fan four stick. Mm -hmm. um, Fantastic Four. If I were to write the Fantastic Four movie. Um, uh, and quickly, this is like Batman and Robin, but I feel like, you know, 66 Batman wouldn't be bad if it took place in the 60s. I think if they actually kept it in the 60s. Well, they picked up, DC Comics picked up the Batman, the, um, the Batman 66 books, and they actually write it within the 60s. Yeah, that and makes sense. And they recreate, like, characters, like, there's Bane and stuff like that, and they just recreate them in the 60s sense. Um, but, but with, with um, a Fantastic Four, if I were to make the Fantastic Four, the, the, the opening scene of the Fantastic Four... Holy would, shit, look at that traffic. Would be the Kennedy, um, the traffic's really bad right now, and it's hard to get over right here. Uh, would be the, uh, th this would be in Dallas, uh, 1963, um, right the day that Kennedy was shot, I would have the Fantastic Four stop the Kennedy assassination. So that would be the beginning of the movie is that, is that President Kennedy is, is not assassinated and the Fantastic Four saves him. And with that happening, it establishes two things. One, that it's in the 60s, but two, it's in an alternate version of the 60s because Kennedy is obviously dead uh, or died. Um, and uh, so, and then Kennedy's big thing was space and going to space. So, you know, we'd end up going to the moon in 1965 instead of going to the moon in 1969, you know. It'd be a totally different parallel world, kind of how like Watchmen was in a parallel world where it's sort of the 80s, right? But Nixon's still president somehow. Right. And he served like an extra four years or something. You know, like this that. would be like sort of the '60s with Kennedy still president somehow. And I think if it was some sort of uh, googy mod, uh, cosmic sort of '60s thing, I think all of the aspects of the Fantastic Four would really work in a in a, in its own world. You know, in this sort of cool '60s universe so that's a brand new world yeah, there you go back to disney and it all it's, it's all, all going back all to disney well, anyway. marvel's owned by disney yep. ha ha yep and now fox is going to be owned by disney it always comes back to disney it all comes back to disney bippity My boppity boo man. we're going to get to this airport we're on an adventure crook. folks we are on a serious adventure thank you for coming with us on this adventure um and we will see you next time on the sleepless nights of insomnia Listening to the Sleepless Nights podcast, or should we say, podcast? Podcast. Emphasis on the odd. Our theme is by Mars Homeworld at Dead House Music. Our opening announcement is by Ophelia Necro. She does a radio show called Suicide Watch. And you can reach Mr. Lobo at cinemainsomnia.com or find me on YouTube, YouTube slash Mr. Lobo, M I S T E R L O B O. Mr. Lobo on Facebook, Facebook slash MR dot L-O-B-O, or on Twitter, at Mr. Lobo, M-I-S-T-E-R-L-O-B-O. Or you can find myself, Paul Sanders, or better known as Besto TV, at Besto TV, on YouTube slash Besto TV, on Twitter at Besto Prod, P-R-O-D, and on Facebook, Besto TV. If you want to place an advertisement with this podcast, and gosh, why wouldn't you? Uh, we could be talking about you right now. Contact us, Mr. Lobo at cinemainsomnia.com. That's M R L O B O at sign C I N E M A I N S O M N I A dot com. Or support us on Patreon. Patreon supporters get to hear this podcast before anyone else and a lot of other great stuff, right, Paul? 
Uh, sure. <laughs> doesn't get it better than that, right? So come join the fun at patreons.com slash cinema insomnia. That's patreon.com slash cinema insomnia. Please stay up with us next week for another Sleepless Nights podcast. Or should we say, odd Podcast. The best thing about being an insomniac is never having to say good night. Good night. <laughs>